Civilian casualties in Syria and Iraq and other countries where the US is currently militarily engaged has been one of the largely unspoken tragedies over the past few years. Huge numbers of civilians dying in airstrikes and drone strikes, very rarely getting any coverage. And we knew that as we, as we transitioned to Donald Trump, that was only going to get worse because he made clear during the campaign that he doesn't give a damn about the deaths of civilians. But I don't think anyone predicted how bad it was gonna get and how fast it was going to happen. So let's look at some recent numbers over the past few months. Let's bring up this first chart. And you're gonna see there, the month that we are, we're in right now is that last bar. The number shooting up of civilian deaths linked to coalition airstrikes in just Iraq and Syria. This isn't even all the countries that we're engaged in. And so those numbers leading up to then, I mean, you have different categories there. Some are still contested because they literally just happened in the past week. We'd, we'd <coughs> on that, uh, last week, uh, 200 deaths in, in one bombing, dozens in another bombing. Um, but, but many of those will be verified very soon. And just going back four or five years now, he's managed in just a couple of months to make Obama look like he deserved his Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Which he most certainly did. And what's really interesting is that this isn't just, you know, he said, we're really gonna stick it to ISIS, and so maybe they're just doing way more airstrikes. And so you'd expect, because we're not that careful, a lot of civilians will die. But it's not actually that, because if you bring up this next chart, you're gonna see that the actual numbers of missions being flown is not higher. In fact, it's lower, especially in Syria. It apparently is a result of simply taking the gloves off, as they would say, a euphemism for no longer caring about whether civilians die. And we have some other news and where this policy might be extended to in the future. But isn't it ridiculous that it didn't take him more than a couple of months to blow Obama's records out of the water? Yeah, but let me give you a sense of what it actually means. Because some observers might look at that and go like, yeah, I killed more. Jihadis over there. No, no, we're not talking about jihadis. We're talking about civilians. Kids. So, 200 Iraqi civilians were killed in a US airstrike this week in Mosul. 200 the Iraqis are supposed to be our allies. Remember, we went to go liberate them. 200 civilians killed in, in Mosul because oh, we took the gloves off. But we were supposed to take the gloves off against the terrorists. But Trump is indifferent. Remember, he said he killed their family members. So, he's like, who mm-hmm. cares? Terrorists, civilians, good guys, bad guys, they all look Arab to me. And I know there's some right wingers out there going, yeah, right? So, but for the rest of us who are human beings, we ought to take this into account. We killed dozens of Syrian civilians in the Raqqa province a few days before that when we targeted a school. Oh. Now they say, oh no, the bad guys were taking refuge inside a school. Let's say a couple of bad guys are taking refuge near a school in your neighborhood. Do you bomb the school and kill the yeah. people inside the school? Because there's a couple of bad guys in there. If it's our civilians, aren't we a thousand times more careful? I hope we are, right? But they're civilians. Who cares? Who are? I can't tell. They don't see them the same way. Yeah, they don't. They don't apply the same value to people there. Whether they're conservative or even a lot of liberals in government. Once you get involved in this, you run these missions, you sit in those meetings, you do dehumanize these people, almost regardless of your ideology. We're going to make them human and real to you in a second by showing you pictures. Uh, but a week earlier, uh, from all the things that I had just told you, there's also a destruction of a mosque in Aleppo that also killed dozens of civilians. So one after another after another. So And we t- reported on that, and at that point, the US military said that they were not involved. Turns yeah. out that that probably wasn't the case. Yeah, and so you're not hearing about dozens of more terrorists killed. You're just hearing about dozens of more civilians killed, sometimes hundreds of more civilians killed. So in in that Yemen raid, which was famously botched, and we lost one of our own. Remember, we killed thirty civilians there, including eight children. Uh, let me show you one of them. Um, uh, so no, that was from an earlier raid. That's Abdul Rahman Anwar Al Awlaki. He's a sixteen-year-old American that Obama killed in a drone strike. So now let me show you his sister who was killed in the Yemen raid. Nawar Al Awlaki. Uh, she's eight years old. Um, and she's among the kids that were killed in the Yemen raid. So she's, by the way, also an American citizen. We murdered an eight year old American girl and no one gave a damn. That is stunning, that's amazing. And so anyone who spoke up was called unpatriotic, trying to undermine the military. Sean Spicer was making that case. So are you happy? Is you wanted the gloves taken off and you wanted their family members killed? Well, you just saw them. That was one of the girls that was murdered in Yemen. 
And and we lost one of our own in Yemen. And what did we get? We were supposed to get a top uh, terrorist in Yemen. We didn't get him at all. And then he went and taunted Donald Trump on Twitter, fairly appropriate. So mission not accomplished. All we're doing so far is basically just butchering more civilians. Yeah. And when you do that, even if you don't care about them because you're a terrible person, um, if that's the case for you, I mean, raise your hand. To tell us how barbaric and indecent and inhumane you are. Okay, great, you're in that corner. Even if you don't care about them, what does that do? Every one of their families wants to come kill us. It creates dozens, hundreds of more people who now are enemies when they didn't need to be. But again, if you're a right winger, you don't think logically anyway. You're generally an ignorant person. So you probably think like, I don't know, but I murdered some other people that it, don't look like me. So I kind of feel good. It, it's so, I mean, we've been trying to make that case. I mean, I, I've, I've been here for five and a half years. You've been trying to make that case for more than twice as long. Right wingers know if they hear that there's a terror attack in another country, they buy guns and barricade their doors to protect their family, to kill the hated outsiders. But for some reason, they can't imagine that if you literally bomb and kill family members of people, some of them might do the equivalent, the version of that in their country, which is joining an organization who tries to kill Americans. It still doesn't occur to them that there is not a finite supply of, of, of terrorists. There's not 300 terrorists, and if we just kill them, there won't be terrorism anymore. But that you can continually create new ones through a cycle of violence that we're doubling down on under Donald Trump. Which led to one of the most famously dumb comments in American TV history from Joe Scarborough, who repeated over and over once when they were discussing the issue, they hate us because they hate us. They hate us because they hate us. Yeah. No, no, we shouldn't look into why they hate us. We should just be blatantly, obviously stupid. Exactly. And now, so, by the way, one more quick fact for you guys. For all of you Trump supporters who said, well, at least we're not gonna get into more messes in the Middle East and more wars. First of all, this seems like a lot of bombing and a lot of messes, but apparently we're not in. You say, well, there's no ground troops. Did you know that he deployed 500 new troops, American troops, into the middle of Syria? Oops. Yep, and there's been rumblings from the military talking about the possibility of sending thousands more into both Syria and Iraq, sort of those trial balloons, but it could happen any day. And this, this idea that we don't need to worry as much about civilian casualties, which he was famous for during the primary. Ted Cruz is famous for saying we need to carpet bomb. They're apparently doing a version of that at this point. Is not solely in Syria or in Iraq. It's also going to go to other regions. Here's some information coming from sources inside of the military about Somalia. Officials say Trump's decision that he just made approves a Pentagon request to allow more aggressive airstrikes in Somalia's southern region. It also allows American forces to increase assistance to the Somali National Army and other allies fighting Al Shabaab, another terrorist group operating in multiple countries in that region. Portions of southern Somalia, excluding the capital Mogadishu, will be considered a war zone. When they say aggressive airstrikes, they mean airstrikes where we don't really have to be sure of who's there. We don't really have to look at the damage that was done afterward. We just get really aggressive for a while. We showed you the charts. We showed you what aggressive airstrikes look like. Yeah, uh, Glenn Greenwald made a great point about this. Uh, some in the mainstream media naively said, no, if Trump gives the order to kill the civilians and then their families, uh, brave patriotic American soldiers will stand up to him and not follow that order. Yeah, where is that happening? No, of course they're following the order. They're in. Look, I don't know about the guys doing the bombing, but the guys that are at the higher level seem to be enthusiastically enforcing these more aggressive strikes where we aggressively kill civilians. There's almost no talk of any success in any of these bombing strikes. Yeah. Believe me, if they got a high level ISIS or Al Shabaab leader, they would never stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. So far, no high level terrorists killed, nothing but hundreds of civilians butchered. And they think that's a wonderful success. And by the way, he but he did promise it to you. So if you were unconcerned about Trump, well, we told you you should be concerned. He said not only would they go and kill all these people, but he would have Exxon take their oil fields. And our new Secretary of State is the CEO of Exxon. That's hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. So which leads us to our poll. Question for you guys. Um, collateral damage. Would you execute three civilians if there was a 50% chance you could take out a terrorist compound? Now, I want you to seriously think about that. I'm not trying to do this because, oh, our audience is more progressive and you guys are gonna say no. No, no, think about it. Like, if you take out a terrorist compound, 
those guys do kill people and you might save lives down the road. You might, right? Now, and normally in a strike, as you can see here, three civilians would be a very conservative number. Mm -hmm. They're killing dozens of civilians in these strikes. If not hundreds. If not hundreds, right? And a 50% chance you get them, that is very high. In a lot of these, like in Yemen, we didn't get them at all. We didn't even come close to getting them, right? So I'm giving you a high percentage chance that you're gonna get the terrorist compound, but you're gonna have to kill three civilians, okay? So I, I'm, I'm curious about your answer. I don't think it's necessarily a, an easy answer. Go to tytnetwork.com slash civilians. But before you answer that, let me show you some pictures. Now these people that I'm about to show you are innocent. They didn't do anything, they're not, this is just stock photos, okay? So three civilians, if those three guys die, uh, well, we get a terrorist compound at least. Okay, now show me the next picture, as you saw there. Well, that is a family. That's a very young girl there. Uh, you know, and there's a middle-aged guy, but an older woman. Are you comfortable killing these three civilians as long as we kill uh, and take out a significant terrorist compound? Now we mentioned Somalia. Now let's look at a family that might look a little bit more similar to what we might kill uh, if we had a, did a strike in Somalia. Now I don't know. I hope some of you are beginning to get a little concerned. God knows though. I'm going to show you one last picture. What if these were the three civilians we took out? Are you comfortable with that? We're gonna take out a terrorist compound. We got a good 50% chance of taking out a terrorist compound. Now these people are all innocent, and I don't mean to, you know, I feel bad using those stock photos of them, mm -hmm. uh, but I want you to get a sense of what we're talking about. This here. is what three people look like. That's what three people look like, okay? And I know that for a lot of you, you didn't change your mind on any of those pictures, mm -hmm. and you thought there's no difference between those pictures. My guess is that for some of you, you looked at some of those pictures a little differently and that it matters which of those three civilians got killed in that strike. But everyone you saw comes from stock pictures of having nothing to do with terrorism at all yeah. and are all perfectly innocent. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? And now there's a lot of people in this country that are screaming, yes, yes, we're willing to do that. And the media, by the way, where are you? I thought you guys were all gonna object when Trump did things wrong. I know you're obsessed with Russia and a couple of other things, but where are you guys? There was an eight year old American girl that was killed. Where are you guys? I thought you guys were gonna make a big deal out of this. Online media's covering it. Democracy Now, big expose about it. That's right, but mainstream media, I see almost nothing about this. Membership helps fund the Young Turks. You know one great thing about that? That means we're not accountable to anyone but you guys. That's why we're strong together, because we built this show around you. Come build it even bigger and better at tytnetwork.com slash join.